Hello there guys, it's Tony here. Um, so we're now in the bush at night. Um, we're, tonight our task is to do some um, Cody snail counting. So um, Cody snails are our large carnivorous snails that we have up here. Um, the main things that predate on them is um, feral pigs and uh, hedgehogs. But then the, the possums also have been known to eat them and well of course they're carnivorous and they're also cannibals so they also each eat, eat each other so not much we can do about that so the gear I've got I've got a counter here which is a, just a thumb counter and I'm also using a um, carbide miner's lamp it's a um, large miner's hand lamp um, labelled big boy um, carbide lamps really good for looking uh, for these um, looking for these snails. So let's turn it up a bit. So we're coming down into the wetlands. See, we've just had a bit of a downpour in the middle of summer. So when you have a downpour in the middle of summer, it really brings them out. So it should not take too long to find one. Yeah, a lot of people go into native bush and they, oh look what I found! I found a Cody snail shell, but Shells aren't cool to find. I, I like finding them alive where they haven't been eaten by the predators. So up here we find quite a few alive. But being in the middle of summer you won't find as many. But um, I'm just doing my um, biannual um, count for these critters. So, yep. Okay. We're coming down into the wetlands now. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our way to the bush hut and do my most favourite activity, which is um, having a nice cup of coffee. So I've already been there tonight to the bush hut, so we've already got the lamps and that running. Um, and of course, most importantly, the coffee's ready to put the jug on, see. I'm very surprised we haven't run into one yet, but it won't be long, and then we will. It's quite dry here, actually. It's a little bit drier down here than normal. So it could be why. Um, yeah. We've got Doc 200 which is just set up here. Yeah. Unsure if I've caught anything in it but if I have I've got no way of getting into the trap because I haven't got my tool on me to get in so yeah it can be a bit of a pain. Oh. Not make our lamp go out. What in the world lives in there? Hmm, it'd be a nice, nice place to put a camera trap. Hopefully, we hear some kiwi calling out too, because we've got kiwi up in here now. It's taken me years to get them back, but we've got them back now, so we need to reward ourselves with some kiwi calls when they start. So, okay, this is getting into some territory for Cody snail, so. Better watch out where I stand. Okay. We're really getting into some. Ah, look at this. We got one. And boom, there he is. Look at that. Got a good size one too. Here we go. So this is one of our largest land snails. You can judge my, my hand as being you know, how big he is. He's about the size of my Grit GoPro camera. Or slightly smaller. Yeah. So yeah, um, Cody snail. Um, 
used to used to be real we'll go to number one so we found one used to be very rare to find them in here but you know you can almost um regard them as plentiful in here there's actually quite a lot so i'm gonna um the second check i'll do will be in the middle of winter and that's when you really see them because it's a little bit dry for them now so uh, it's good to see them that size because before I started trapping in here, we had hedgehogs and feral pigs killing them off. And the only thing you'd find were broken up shells. <sighs> yep, yeah, we'll go. So we're actually on track one now. Oh, it's wet in here. Mm. Pretty wet because we've just had, you know, it's the middle of summer. But in, up in you know the top of New Zealand here, the weather is as unpredictable as it can be. Yeah, scorching hot days, and then out of the blue, you get a bit of a, a, a rainy day. So, right, we're back on the track. Yay, open land! Oh, there we go. Cody Snell number two. So then I see that's even bigger. That is the size of a GoPro camera. Okay. Mm. Nice healthy looking guy. See that? Yeah, that's even bigger. See, they're nice and shiny. Nice. They doesn't look like it's ever been attacked by things. Sometimes you see their shells have been dented up and yeah, been all scarred up and that from being attacked. So we'll put him back where he belongs. <clears throat> Number two. Okay. On a go through this here and have a good look. So these, that was about 50 metres away from the first one, so it wasn't actually that far away. So, um, yeah. So we might only see two, maybe three. I'm not too worried about that because when I start getting worried is when I start seeing broken open shells. But I haven't seen any of that, so obviously... We haven't had any being killed by things, so. Oh, just gotta make our way through this Nico palm. Okay. We're actually way off the track. Mm. There's spiderweb in my nose. Not in my nose, but. Sort of. There's no spider on it. Oh, hang on. We're in the ragged bush now. If any Cody snails in here, we'll probably end up just walking past and not even spotting any. Okay, you trying to look for the old poodle? Ah, oh, there he is. She is. Couldn't hurt it. Um, okay. So these, um, yeah, these Cody snails, they mostly eat things like worms. They occasionally eat the old slug and other insects as well. Oh, that's a nice old tree. Look at that. Flanged base. Hmm. Um, yeah, and they... The thing with Cody snails is they also eat each other. But we're extremely lucky that they're quite hematoroditic. Uh, whatever their word is. Um, you know. So, if because if they weren't like that, we would have lost them because there's actually very few in the area. Don't have to worry about them up here. We've got thousands of them up here now, so... Yeah. So this is all, all wetlands here. Well, it's not so wet now, because it's, you know, the middle of summer here. It's actually quite dry. But, you know, the... In the middle of winter, the Cody snail will move to the higher parts. But, you know, during the summer, because it gets so dry, they'll follow the water and, you know, go to the lower parts, so... Yeah. Next minute, got ourselves lost. No, I know this place like the back of my hand, so that won't be happening. I hope. Through the tree, around the tree, under the tree. And occasionally over it. Oop. Okay. So, yeah. No, we're all good here. Right, we'll make our way. Back towards the hut. Oh, 
nice open area here. Sounded like a wasp nest just then. Just give me the heebie jeebies, right. Okay, this isn't the sort of area where we'll find them, but there's one more bit of a wetland that I want to check on the way home. Oh, way home, oh, way back to the bush up. Ah, cutty grass, I'm also barefoot. Because uh, I came up here earlier to replace a Dock 200, and my boots got soaked. So, yeah, they're at home drying out. But oh well, I've already got wet feet, so I'll, um, I'll come up barefoot. So. At least there's no gorse in here. That wouldn't be too flash having gorse. Oh, yeah. Well, that could have been in the toe. Right. Oh, look at that. Got a web spider. Good size one. So right now he's building his big orb web, so I'd be not be mean and go busting it, so we'll walk around him. Oh, okay, he won't be walking around, there's another one. Walk around the other way. That's not unusual to see those webs at least five foot across. Ah, what, there's another one. Well, it looks like the spiders are forcing us to walk in different ways so. yeah, yeah, it takes some hours to build that so I'd feel a little bit you know, mean for busting their webs that they just spent hours building so I'll try and walk around them and okay, back to the bush hut for a coffee yes coffee coffee right <coughs> fall over. So you might remember this part from the last video. We were checking those Dock 200s and got back and had no coffee because we had no lighter. Well obviously we've got carbide lamp we can start a primer with. We also got a lighter in my pocket. We got that one uh, also left up in the hut since. So. Oh and the lamps are going up there so um, we are going to have a coffee. Right most important thing you know, coffee coffee is actually more important than oxygen yeah you can see the glow from the lamps we're just going up to the hut now oh we got glow worms there we go don't know if you guys can see those but most people associate glowworms with caves but glowworms aren't always in caves oh look at that Ooh, look. Yeah, that's a good one nice and close to the, to the bush hut look and he's out so this guy's most probably looks like he's got head stuff but he's most probably sucking a worm up like a big noodle because that's how they eat them just, you know, just to make things a little bit more appetising, just before we have our coffee. Um, yeah. So we'll click our counter again. So three, that's not so bad, considering the fact it's the middle of summer. Right. Yeah, our bush hut. Yeah, bush hut's in a little bit of a wetland itself, so... Wouldn't be surprised if there's one around somewhere. Yes. Nah, I need coffee. I'm gonna die. Alright. Nothing more important than coffee more you know about five times more important than oxygen I can live longer without oxygen than I can without coffee right here oh, there we go so that's three three Cody snails for the night it's quite funny because when you come in here I've also got cave waiters living in here 
See, oh, there we go. Look at that, these guys. So people often associate cave wetters with caves. So it looks like we might have to name these ones hut wetters. Well, they're cave wetters. So what I'll do is I'll shine on them. Sorry, little dude. That gives you an idea of how big they are. That's actually only a little one. You're also native, a native species. So that's good to have them. Little carbide miner's lamp. Hey, then, guys, right, I'm going to put the jug on, have a coffee, and... I'm finished up here for tonight and go home and go to sleep. I'll see you guys next time.